Everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I certainly am because today I'm very excited about the car review we're doing. Um, this is a very special car that uh, I definitely want some point in my stable. Nope, not talking about that one. I'm talking about this. Here she is. Isn't she beautiful? This is the 2015 Porsche 911 GTS. And it's really those last three letters that make this thing, uh, well, hold its street cred. It's because this is not quite the GT3 or GT2, which is really more street road race car kind of stuff. And this is definitely not the C or the C4S or the S. So what exactly is it? Who is it for? Well, considering how these things are holding their value like crazy right now, um, and considering it's considered to be the right size for a sports car, I'm very excited to go test this thing out and see is it really special or not. So we're going to get started right now. So in this car, we've got the 3.8 liter flat six, 24 valve, six cylinder. And uh, it's been around for a little while. Um, now, of course, the newer cars have kind of moved into the four range, which is great. Um, but this, this engine is pretty stout. I mean, it's producing 430 horsepower and 325 foot pounds of torque. That's a lot. Uh, I mean, considering there's no turbo. And uh, the best part about this motor is really the sound. Take a listen. Woo! That, I mean, that wakes you up. <laughs> so, this is my first time driving a PDK 911, and my impressions are pretty good. I mean, it's very intuitive, um, it's a seven speed, really quick shifts. Um, on this really windy road. It seems to be in the right gear, the right time. Um, I don't know, what else is there to say? It's great. Oof. That's what I'm talking about. Just listen to that thing. It's amazing. This thing is giving out so many great sounds. I mean, it just, can you imagine a 911 that didn't make any sound? Like no matter how good it would be, it just wouldn't deliver that same feeling. Man, I'm really gonna miss it when the dino juice goes away. So steering on this car is great, as you would expect it to be. Um, I mean, I can feel, this is not the best of roads by the way, I can feel everything. And the car doesn't feel like it's unstable, it just just feels like, almost like it's connected by a, a rod, you know? And in a way, that's kind of what we all want. We want it to be like old school steering, but we want it to be good enough for today's cars, today's power, and the demands that we have for today's handling. This is great. Okay, handling on a 911. Well, if you've never driven a 911 before, one thing you're gonna notice is there's a lot of weight in the back because that's where the engine is. And that also means there's not a whole lot of weight on the front. So you have to keep that in mind with your inputs. I mean, when you're going into a corner and you lift, ooh, that's, that's bad news, especially if uh, you're really carrying some speed. But 
assuming that you understand how to drive a 911, which is, you know, basically you want to go slow into a corner and you want to gas it as soon as you can as you apex, so that way you carry the speed out with the throttle on and you get it right and it really rewards you. It's awesome. How does this 911 brake? like a 911 should. It's great. I mean, these brakes work well. They don't fade. They give you confidence. They match this car's power. So no matter how fast you're going, you always feel like you've got enough brake to slow you down. The only thing you want to make sure is that you're braking at the right time. You don't want to unsettle the car going through a corner. Other than that, they're fantastic. You know, one of the best parts about owning a 911 is that you don't have to explain yourself. You know, there's a lot of cars out there where you might love it. And, you know, when people aren't really that familiar with it, you have to explain to them why is it a special car, right? But with a 911, that's not really the case. You know, if you walk to a, you know, walk to a party or something and, you know, somebody asks you what kind of car you drive, which I know that's kind of cliche, but let's just say that happened. You just said, hey, I drive a 911. Enough said. You don't have to explain yourself past that. And I think that's really unique and interesting to this car. Um, more often than not, um, most people struggle because they go, well, I got this muscle car. It's a Dodge. It's a, well, it's a Challenger, you know, kind of retro from the 80s. And it's it's got this big motor. And there's always a disclaimer. There's always a caveat. There's always a read between the lines. Let me explain it to you. And and that's just not present with 911s. I love that about the 911. All right, guys. So that is our drive in the 911 GTS. And what a drive it was. It was fantastic. I've had a blast today. Um, one quick comment that I wanted to make, which is Porsche in general. You know, I think today's world, we've really forgotten why driving is fun. You know, we, we think more about commuting and functionality and comfort and these things gas mileage and range and that's all great and grand i understand that's the real world but porsche has this thing they do with all their products where no matter who you are if you get into their product and you spend some time in it you start to realize that driving is also supposed to be fun this gts absolutely delivered in that area so that's why to me this car is special the only thing i would have done differently if i were buying this car is buy it in a coupe and then also buy it in a manual because to me, the PDK is great for the track, right? I mean, if you have a GT3 and a PDK, that makes sense. You're going for lap times. You care about those quick shifts. You want to get the power of the wheels quicker than, you know, that long shift that a human's going to do. Makes sense. But in a road car, sometimes that's not really what it's about. It's about being more engaged. It's about having more fun. You know, if you want an automatic to put around, and there's millions of cars out there, you pick one of those. But if you buy a GTS, right? That is the trim that's right before the GT3. This car's supposed to invoke enthusiasm. So I think a manual is the right way to buy it. Side note, uh, as a used car, these things now are at the bottom end, I think they're right around 85 grand. And I think the top end is right around 100. You'll also notice that the manuals are holding their value higher. So uh, should you buy one? Yeah, I think if, if you've got that kind of money to spend and you want a 911 that's going to make you happy and it's the right size, I think this is the car to get. Um, I think the new 911s have gotten a little too big. So um, to me, a sports car needs to be light and nimble and even a little small to pivot around corners in the right ways. This does that. Um, so will this become a collectible? I don't know. But I can tell you that if it does, if it goes up in value at any point, the manuals are absolutely going to lead the charge on that. So food for thought on that. Um, other than that, guys, I had a blast. I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow, and it helps me get you even better content with cars you actually care about seeing. So go ahead and leave con uh, comments below. I read them all and respond to all of them. So uh, again, I really appreciate it, guys. It means a lot to me. Thanks very much, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.